Bonjour. This is the only French word I know, so <laughs> it's, it's enough, probably. Good morning, I'm Luca Garulli from Italy, and uh, I'm the main developer of RDB, it's a NoSQL database, and uh, I'm the CEO of the company Nuala Base that is based in London, is that provides the professional support for, for this open source product. Today, I'd like to introduce you a new way to create a web application. You know, we, we usually have a lot of kind of web application. In the last of years, uh, web application development has evolved. Uh, you can use uh, a lot of uh, languages, uh, a lot of stacks, uh, different technologies, uh, Ajax, uh, different companies, move the logic between the server or the client. So it's creating web application today could be very, very complex. So, uh, these are the main three points of today. Uh, what is happening, developing web application today? The goal is to reduce the complexity and improve performance. And next, uh, the, the new way uh, I'd like to introduce you to create a web application using a totally different approach. Can you remember when uh, developing web application was uh, so easy? You just have uh, a web application, develop it using PHP, Java, or any, any other language, few clients, and a database. This usually was in an uh, internet context. You, 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 you had few clients, uh, so it was very, very easy. And pages was always rendered at the server side because there wasn't Ajax and other similar technologies. Why today we, we have this kind of architecture? Mainly because uh, we have many, many more clients. This is the internet effect. Probably yesterday we designed an application for a few tens of hundreds of, of concurrent clients. Today we can develop a design our application thinking to hundreds, millions of users. Response time. Uh, you can't use the network connection as an excuse anymore because usually network connection isn't not anymore the bottleneck. So users expect to have the response in less than one second. Big data. Today we have uh, million, billions of information all together. So the database uh, is growing so huge. And how many languages are you using for all these layers? Probably for sure, JavaScript uh, on the client side. If, if, you are, if you are designing a web application, you can only use JavaScript or any other languages on top of JavaScript. For the server side, you have a lot of uh, choices uh, like Java, PHP, .NET, Ruby, Python, uh, and a lot of other technologies. What about the database? Uh, we have uh, some applications that are using uh, a language uh, inside the database, like uh, Oracle, PL, SQL, store procedure. And you, we usually have to create uh, some batch uh, to, I don't know, remove uh, all the record uh, during the night or create aggregation. Uh, probably th these batch are written in Bash, Perl, or Ant, or any other language. So all this technology is a big mess because you have to know every single language, every single technology, if you want to design a responsive application, web application. So this requires very skilled people, even though you like to, to use a, a lot of languages altogether. But it, it's very hard to, to be a super expert of any single technology you use. And use time for development and testing. And the bad is that sometimes the tuning phase uh, could be longer 
than development and testing. How many times we spend more and more time to tuning our application, probably in production, than develop it. So this is a bloodbath. <laughs> so the question is, uh, OK, it's, it's complex because my application is complex. I have, to, to, I have a lot of clients, uh, a lot of data all together. But I, I, I need a, a, a very complex architecture for my application to scale up, uh, this is needed. Um, before to start um, using this uh, new novel approach, I'd like to present to you the RDB. RDB is a, a, a NoSQL database. Uh, it's an open source project, Apache to license, so used for any any purpose. We, it's always free, and uh, is uh, yes, it's a NoSQL database uh, like uh, so many others, but implements uh, uh, it's a multimodal database. So uh, <coughs> you can use uh, like uh, MongoDB, CouchDB, because uh, supports the documents concept. You can uh, create relationships between documents altogether because it's a graph database under the hood. And you can model object-oriented concepts. You can create classes. You have the inheritance and other object-oriented concepts. After 14 years of research and four of development, uh, RDB is very easy to use. Just download. It's uh, about one megabyte. Uh, it's written in Java. Just uh, download, double click, and start. It's very, very fast. You can create uh, on common hardware uh, about uh, 150,000 of record per second. So it's very, very fast. You can use it uh, in uh, schemaless mode. So like uh, MongoDB, just uh, get a JSON, put into the database, and it's done. No, no schema. It's very, very relaxed. You can have uh, different documents with different fields in the same uh, cluster. Schemaful, the opposite. Uh, you can create uh, a schema, so with constraints, like in the relational database. Uh, for example, uh, you, you can create constraints uh, for the fields, for null, or regular expression as well. Or this is the more, most used approach. You can mix the schemaless and schemaful uh, modes. So I like uh, to define, uh, I don't know, five properties uh, for a class, but I, li I like to, to let the user, the developer, to create uh, additional fields. You have transactions. Yeah, it's a NoSQL database that supports transactions, uh, like uh, the rational database. Uh, all transactions are optimistic, so uh, the server is uh, unloaded. Uh, even though you have uh, thousands of clients, uh, the server is not aware about uh, your transaction because the full transaction, the, the full transaction, absent on the client side only. And when you commit, uh, the client uh, uh, send the block of changes to the server in just one shot. So it's very efficient and supports acid, acid uh, properties. So rollback uh, in case of crash, like the rational database. You have complex types, so n not anymore creating strange tables to store uh, just a collection of a string, for example, because the database supports uh, uh, collection maps uh, or even embedded documents. And SQL. What? <laughs> a NoSQL product that supports SQL is crazy. Yeah, uh, we started from SQL because Everyone knows SQL. How many of you knows SQL? <laughs> okay. So we prefer, instead of uh, creating yet another language uh, for query database, we started using SQL and extend this language to support trees and graphs notation. So this query works. Um, mm, 
since it's a graph database, uh, you have relationships uh, between documents. So in this case, uh, you are making a join, like a, a rational database join. So just traverse the properties with a dot annotation. Very, very easy. Or even if you have a collection, you can, give, uh, you can return all the account where addresses contains at least uh, one, uh, one country, Italy. Okay. Uh, there is uh, a notation for graphs, so you can browse uh, uh, the properties uh, and filter the properties, and uh, you have the traverse, traverse oper um, command operator. So uh, if you have a, a social network like application like Facebook, uh, please give me the friend of friend of friend uh, up to the seventh level. You can do it with a rational database because there is not the recursive concept inside of it. And you can mix uh, uh, all the queries all together. For example, give me all the friend of friend of friend, but only where uh, only friend that lives in Paris. Uh, there are a lot of operators uh, for strings, for uh, uh, a lot of useful stuff to create uh, very short queries uh, that everyone can uh, read uh, without the uh, reading a book. Uh, there is uh, the schemaless concept. For example, if you, don't, if you haven't defined um, fields for profile, in this case, uh, please give me all the profile where any field, any properties, has uh, a like J, for example. Or give me all the stock where all the fields are not null. With any, all uh, you, you are telling all the fields or any fields because fields can change. You can work with, against collection, with contains operator, with maps, contains key, contains value, sides. You have a lot of uh, operator against collection and maps. It's written in Java, so this means that it's very robust, never crash, uh, is available in all the platform, and thank you to uh, Java Five uh, uh, is very fast because I use the Neo API to go and at the operating system level for IO access. There are a lot of bindings for any, any languages and supports natively HTTP and RESTful protocol. So you can uh, just start the server and start using it uh, using uh, curl, for example or the browser to get execute queries, uh, get documents. And all the documents, all the graph uh, is uh, represented using JSON. So um, it's, RNB is born for, for the web because it uh, talks the language of the internet. Uh, we have new algorithm for uh, managing indexes, uh, so even though 99% of databases, uh, rational and NoSQL, uses, uses the B plus 3 algorithm. Uh, we used a new, brand new algorithm that mixed the B plus 3 and the red black 3 all together. So uh, uh, this algorithm is fast like the B plus 3 for uh, searches, but it's much, much cheaper on insert and update. Okay. That usually is the bottleneck of uh, the B plus 3. Security. Uh, even though many NoSQL products uh, avoid security at all, uh, we support security like a rational database. So you can use uh, user uh, roles, uh, grant permissions. Uh, RDB has a own cache. So uh, by default, it uses all the memory you, you reserve for the process. So uh, if you have four gigabyte uh, reserved for RDB, uh, and if you use the database, uh, sooner or later, all the object will be in, in memory. So after the cache is full, it's, it's a hot, uh, you have a response time less than one millisecond for every single operation. So it's not so important using uh, 
third party, party products like Memcache or Redis or other products because ODB already supports, uh, already have two caches to speed up operation. We have object-oriented concept. I don't know if you are using JavaScript uh, because uh, you, you, you love uh, uh, function language, but object-oriented concepts are very useful when you create a very, very complex application. So in this case, uh, you can create persistent classes extending other. So uh, if I have a person class that has a, an address, and I define a customer with other properties, when I query the customer, I will retrieve um, my customer uh, object uh, record documents will have uh, uh, the properties of the class and the class inherited. And I can execute polymor polymorphic queries. For example, uh, select all the person where CD equals room and will be retrieved all the person, customer and provider instances. So queries are polymorphic. This is huge when you have very complex application. And you can model uh, complex domain. And last but not least, it's a graph database. What is a graph database? How many times we, 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 we bind a tree or a graph in a relational database? You can do it. Why not? Uh, the classic example is uh, um, in, in a company, the employees uh, and the boss, the boss, the boss, the boss, it, it's a tree. Uh, we, we, or we always uh, use a rational database to bind this kind of relationship. So what is the difference between a graph database and a rational database? Both manage relationships. Marco Rodriguez is the author of um, uh, Think and Pop Blueprints, Technologies, uh, and the Grammy language. Uh, it's executed against graph databases. They find that a graph database is any storage system that provides index-free adjacency. This means that uh, you, you don't have a join. Rational database uh, seems so, so, so good for relationship. You know, rational database. But it's not true because every time you, 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 you execute a query, the join is executed at runtime. So if you create a customer and an invoice object, uh, you create a foreign key between uh, two records. But every time you query both records, the join is executed at runtime. This is very, very costly. OK, you can use index, but index uh, uh, scale up not so well when you have millions of records. Index uh, slow down insertion and uh, updates. And uh, more your database uh, grows, more the queries will be slow. Because uh, you have a cost to look up the other records altogether. On the other side, the graph database is uh, uh, create a link between uh, records. In this case, uh, when I store two documents, two, two records, the link is created and it's a physical link. So when I retrieve uh, all the graph or a part of the graph of, of the tree, it's very efficient because uh, I can load uh, hundreds of records all together in a few milliseconds because relationships are physical, stored in the database. There is no join cost. There is no lookup. This means that we, we, we jump from a log n algorithm to a close to be constant time to retrieve the information. Um, this is huge in the big data age because your database is growing, 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 and the application getting slower, slower, slower. Uh, this is just an example. RDB, if you run the blueprints uh, uh, test cases, uh, um, sh show that RDB is able to traverse uh, about 30 million of relationships in less than five seconds. Don't try this at home with a rational database. Okay, 
this was a very, very short introduction to RNDB. There are a lot of ma more features uh, about the product. Just go to the website and if you, if you are interested, uh, look at the, the feature, the, the wiki, the tutorials. But how can I use uh, this cool product to, to change the way to create a web application? Okay, it's a NoSQL database. I can just put uh, in place of my rational database and continue to use my application like yesterday. Yes, y you can. But I'd like to present you a new approach uh, to scale up uh, better. Let's think to a very, very simple domain uh, with uh, uh, always the same example. Customer, ad address, CD, order. So I model some classes and I link uh, the record. Okay, so in ODB, relationship is a link, um, it's not a join. This is an example how to use ODB using just HTTP. Uh, we created a, a new data, brand new database called the J, uh, JS demo and uh, we are uh, executing a query, in this case, uh, using the HTTP get method. So this is the HTTP RESTful uh, request, and the ODB answer with a JSON, with, with, the, with the records found. What about the JSON? Uh, the JSON is uh, it's, it's a plain JSON. Uh, sorry for my typo, this is a double point, okay. Uh, the first part is the record ID. Record ID is a sort of uh, primary key of RNDB. It's created uh, when you create the record and never changes. Class is the class of the record. You can model using different classes. And these are the relationships between other records. Just uh, in a, this is a one-to-many relationship, just in array, put the record ID of other records. Very, very simple. So this is my record ID. I'm linking these two other records. And this one is uh, another property I define as uh, embedded. So I like not having a link, a relationship, but just put uh, this object inside the owner. So this object has no identity because it's stored uh, inside the parent. You can uh, Obviously, create uh, uh, without limit uh, n, n level of uh, object altogether embedded. We can use uh, al also curl to create. Uh, um, for in this case, uh, we create a new customer. So we are using the the HTTP POST method, passing the the JSON. And then, and this is the answer, the record ID of the object created. And this is the answer. When we retrieve the, the object by its record ID, we get back the JSON just created. With the uh, type is always document, forget about it. The record ID, the version, RDB uh, saves. Uh, every time you change the object, the record, the version is incremented by one. This is the multi-version control system to avoid uh, that two users uh, read the same object, uh, the first one save and the other one gives um, return an error. And the class of the object. Okay, so, okay, cool. Other NoSQL product supports HTTP, so there is nothing of new about it. Since RNDB talks natively using HTTP and JSON, it's too crazy using directly from the web pages bypassing every single layer, every single server-side layer. Yeah, it's, you could. You could have a lot of pages, web pages, and that, create, uh, that make AJAX requests against RNDB bypassing every single server layer directly. Yes, you could. Probably it, it, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. Obviously, it's 
very, very, very fast because you avoid uh, your full stack, full stack of technologies. So a single server deploying, deployed in a common uh, hardware can uh, serve thousands of clients at the same time. Development is easier because you, you only have uh, JavaScript and all in the client side. So could be good. And you could uh, use uh, HTTP directly using Ajax or the JavaScript driver we, we provide. This is a simple uh, example about the usage. Just uh, import the, uh, the JavaScript driver. It's a JavaScript. Create a new database with a URL where the database is stored. So the URL of the server, the port is this one by default, and this is the name of the database. Then you open the database. Uh, by default, every single database born with admin admin as a user and other two users. So you open the database, and you create, uh, this is JavaScript, o on the client side, on the Yahoo web page. You create uh, a JSON for uh, your uh, object, just giving the hint about the class because by default, ORNB store uh, all the record without classes in the same uh, cluster, in the same uh, container. But in this case, I'm telling to, to ORNB to store this object in the customer, as a customer. Just save. Very easy. This is uh, JSON, this is uh, JavaScript, and ORNB will uh, get the JSON, will send to the server, and the server will store the object. You can then retrieve the object by record ID, in this case. You can update your document and save again. This is a more real uh, example using jQuery, for example. I have a field in my page called date. I get the date the user insert. And I'm executing a query. Please give me the total of the order where the date is major than the date the user typed. Uh, ORNB supports a sort of preparement statement uh, to avoid SQL injection. injection. Uh, so in this case, I pass the date as argument. Okay. And the query return um, a JSON, obviously it's all a JSON, re result set, with uh, always the result field, get my first one because uh, I get the sum of the total and put in an another field using jQuery. Okay, so it's very, very easy. If you already know JavaScript, it's, it's so easy. Problems. <laughs> yeah, you put all in the client. How many of you are waiting uh, this slide? Yeah, yeah, but we have, we have problem. You can't put uh, every single piece of code uh, into the client side, because you just open the page, change the client, and OK, it's very easy to, to hack. And sometimes it's not a very good idea writing uh, queries in your web pages, because uh, you are showing to the user how the Yahoo database is created. So probably it's, it's not so, so, so fair. Security. To use this approach, uh, we, we, we need a record level security. Because uh, if you change the record ID, I don't know, I have 8-0, my previous record just stored. But if I open my br browser, my page, and I change in 8.1, I could access uh, to another record. Yes, why not? In this case, uh, y you can use the record level access control. So you can define. Uh, um, you can define uh, um, the access per level, uh, per record level. Example, we define the document class, and uh, we have two users that store and uh, read the records, okay, in the same class, in the same database. The first user create insert into, okay, just create a document, and the other user make the same. When the first user get all the record from the document class, it 
only retrieves its own records. And the same for the other user. So uh, we have a record level security to avoid uh, injection and to, to, to be very, very sure that the user can't read uh, any other record. This security is implemented at a low level, so it's impossible for a user to read uh, other records without th the permission. So you could move your application on the client side if the user hack the, the, the JavaScript. Uh, you, are, you are sure that ORNIB will protect your data if you define the record level security. But what about uh, uh, queries? I don't like to put my queries on the client side. Uh, probably it's better having the full control of, of my business logic at, at the server side as well. So probably some queries could be moved on the client side. Yes, why not? Select all the customer, no problem. But complex queries, complex business logics need probably um, uh, to be moved uh, again to the server side. Damn, I, I, it, it was so cool. Uh, only JavaScript for uh, everything. Uh, JSON, HTTP, JavaScript, JavaScript, uh, cool. Now I have to move back to the server side my, my business logic. Yeah, but you can use JavaScript as well. ONDB supports the server side function are written in JavaScript or uh, any other language uh, supports the Java machine like uh, Ruby, PHP, and other languages. So you can move your business logic uh, on the server side. And this is similar to the store procedure. Do you remember store procedure? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's devil. Store procedure is devil. No, it's not devil, but probably yes if you use uh, a language not standard. If you're using Oracle to create uh, your entire application and you write uh, your entire business logic uh, using Oracle PL SQL, uh, probably you will have problem when you want to switch to another database, to another product, because it's not standard. So this is an old concept, uh, but uh, using a brand new way, using JavaScript. Um, ja Server-side JavaScript uh, are uh, uh, always four objects uh, into the context. DB is the current database. The API is identical to the J JavaScript on the client side, on the web page. So it's very easy to move uh, your code from the client to the server side because the API is the same. You, you, uh, if I get that piece of code and then move in this side, works. Request a response. This is a, a sort of mimic for uh, the servlet approach uh, or other approaches. I, I can read uh, inside my function the parameters that the user are uh, passing me. And the response is useful when I have to, to return back uh, the result of my function. So just response dot uh, write and something like that. And a utility class for uh, managing properties and other stuff. This is a, an example. So I start creating my business logic, my repository in the domain-driven design approach, I, or DAO probably. Uh, I create a user create function because uh, I don't like the user just post the JSON to the server side. Yeah, I have a constraint in the, at the database level, but I like to create uh, something more. So in this case, I create a function that get the, the name of the user and the name of the role. The first thing is, uh, okay, I get the role if it exists. Uh, selected uh, from all the role where the name is uh, the role received. If it's null, okay, error. I can return the error to the user. Otherwise, I can begin a transaction this is JavaScript. And I can save uh, the new user. Oh, the name is wired, but should be name. <laughs> OK. And the role I just uh, retrieved uh, in this position. OK. Commit. Return result. That is the record ID. Uh, in case of error, I can roll back my transaction. I can 
return to the to the client uh, a, an error. Very very easy. It's JavaScript. Everybody knows JavaScript if if you are developing web application. And the API is very simple. You have the the full integration between data because data is is a JSON. So you it's it's very easy to create application without the layers without conversion. It's all the same stuff. By default, every single function is published using a URL. If I create a, a function called sum, that just sum two numbers, I can reach that function at this URL. And I can pass arguments in this way. So please sum three and 20. This is important. Server side function have to declare if are idempotent or not. This is uh, because uh, you can uh, execute a non idempotent uh, function using the HTTP GET. So if you, for example, the the function defined before, this change the database. So I have to define this function as non idempotent. In this case. Uh, you can't call uh, this function using the get method, but we have to call the post method. Okay, this is to be compliant with the HTTP protocol that that mm, tell that uh, get operation can't modify your your application. Demo. How much time do we have? Twenty minutes. Okay. So, allora, I can. Okay. Uh, just download RNDB, double click, start, and point your browser on the. Uh, okay. Studio. Studio is the web console, is developed using. HTTP and JavaScript that use Ajax to uh, interact with the server. So the Studio Console used the same approach we, we presented. Uh, no, I created a simple database. Okay, uh, this is my schema. It's uh, empty, just a customer without properties. It's totally schemaless. I could create properties, but now it's not so important. So I created the customer with two records, just me and uh, another one. It's just for example. So this is a query. Uh, under the hood is if I open the Chrome uh, editor and if I qu uh, execute a query, I can show that this is uh, just a HTTP request. OK, this is the response. It's a JSON, and this is the request. Just uh, select from, uh, okay. Uh, twenty is by default the limit, uh, so just give me maximum twenty items. Okay, uh, just go to create creating a, a function. Okay, probably it's uh, it's cool to create a new one, so. Uh, My sum is idempotent, uh, yes, because it doesn't change the database. It's just uh, a return. And I create uh, two parameters. This is a sort of uh, uh, IDE to develop uh, functions. It's just a web application, but you can use the console of RDB or uh, your IDE and post your function to RDB. But in this case, uh, since it's a web application, you can develop uh, with your team uh, using uh, against the same database. Okay. Uh, oh, the resolution is not so. Okay. Save. Yes. This is my my function. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A and B, yeah. 
So I can Yeah. Okay. L U C A this is the result. Very easy. It's JavaScript. But let's go to creating something more cool like uh, so I have the DB object. I can execute a query. So please uh, select from a uh, customer. Yeah. You have a syntax light on this editor. OK, this is the query. Probably uh, I can. I can't extend. It, this is the query with two objects, okay, two records just retrieved. But I'd like to, to filter for uh, where, I don't know, name uh, equals something. And the something is uh, a parameter. Oops. Probably is working also in this way. So, no result, just type. Okay, so very easy to to write. It's it's JavaScript. And okay, and I can execute my my function. So function are uh, stored inside the database. Uh, you can call uh, the function each other in a recursive way. And you can create, you can call uh, your function inside your query. For example, uh, I'd like to my sum was called yeah. Select my sum name. Probably, I don't know if. Oh no. Okay, just. I don't know. This is the demo effect. Sorry. Ah, okay, it's myself. I I redefined my sum function, with, so it's calling. Oh, okay, <laughs> my fault. So, yeah, I, I have another function called just sum. We can use this one. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is my sum name. Surname. Oh yeah, <laughs> I slept a few hours. Sorry. Uh, no, because it's. Oh, yes, I have uh, an error. Uh, oh, okay, it's number. Yeah, but I define this way. Okay, so. Forget about it. Uh, create a new one. Uh, buddy. Okay. Oh, easier. Oops. <laughs> Works um, should be oh this one pardon okay so I can test uh, using this sort of tester okay so uh, I can execute this one was called. Okay, <laughs> so it's a very simple example. I, I created a function with a, a piece of logic, and I can use it uh, inside my SQL uh, language. And the result is hello, Luca. OK. 
Okay, so it binds at runtime uh, this parameter with the name of the customer table, customer class. Because customer, if, you, if we go to the, to the customer, we, we get the name and surname. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a, a sort of a debugger that just execute the HTTP request. Request is uh, I can specify the the way. Uh, so if I um, my previous records, this is my record ID eight zero. I can retrieve. Uh, this one using this syntax. Okay, so this is the studio application. It's a web application to, to develop, uh, to, to work against the database. And uh, since this release of ODB has the function uh, panel to create function and test all together. Uh, okay, uh, ODB is a graph database, so if you create uh, complex relationships, just click the graph button and you have yeah, the explosion of uh, your relationships uh, in a, a visual graph. Well, uh, circles are bigger, more relationships the node has. Um, it's very cool to represent your database. Yeah. Uh, you can go in and display the property of, of the record. Uh, and you can edit uh, the object uh, and uh, retrieve. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can click on the our documents and edit. Uh, so probably and a relationship is missing. Uh, I expect a relationship between uh, A and B. I can't display this kind of relationship. I can click on A and put the relationship. I don't know if it... So you can interact with your objects by editing, editing the, the objects uh, displayed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know I don't know if I have time to show a graph example probably not, but if you if you want to we can mixing a, a graph after all. Okay. So, uh, how much time is left? Ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, RDB uses uh, Rhino. Why Rhino? Because it's uh, bundled in the Java machine. I don't know if uh, Google V8 could be better than Rhino, but Rhino is uh, integrated, so there is no um, there is no um, communication between uh, uh, the engine the JavaScript engine and the RDB server. Rhino is cool because you can call Java language, Java classes. So y uh, if you want to migrate uh, your application and th your application is written in Java, you can reuse all your libraries. And there are plenty of libraries available in Java to use for communication, uh, integration, ATL, uh, SOA, and so on. Um, this is important. For a, an, a, an application we developed using this approach, uh, the problem with wh when you use uh, numbers is that uh, JavaScript has uh, float and double. And it's not so, that are not so good uh, when you manage uh, numbers. B you, you need uh, a, a, a better approach, uh, and Java provides the big decimal class with uh, uh, a uh, good uh, way to round the numbers and make uh, 
um, financial and business intelligence uh, queries. And Rhino is very mature because uh, it's developed so many years ago. And, and it's fast. It's really fast. I don't know if it's fastest. Probably not, but it's, it's very fast. What about uh, when you have, uh, uh, when you need to, cr to load, uh, for example, my customer, my orders, my invoices, all together? I don't like the round trip uh, against my server. So just uh, a query, I can specify a fetch plan to please uh, load, uh, early load uh, the orders, early load the customer, but don't load uh, the, the address. I don't care about address in, my, in, my, in this kind of application. So I can specify fetch plans. This is the example above. Uh, just a string. So by default, I load only one level. Don't go, don't go deeper. But orders, please load uh, orders at one level more. So just load the customer, the, main, uh, the root object, and only orders. If I specify minus one, means that uh, go till the end. If you have uh, a graph with a million of records, it loads a million of records on the client side. So it's dangerous. In that example, the JSON uh, will be this one. Not anymore the record ID we, we, we saw at the beginning of the presentation, but the, all the object expanded inside my my JSON, okay, because I express it, please load, uh, early load uh, orders in just one shot. Future plans, uh, we'd like to add uh, a debugging inside the web studio. In this way, you can debug step by step your functions. This is cool. Um, Rhino allows to debug, to, to hook the, the debugging interface. So. Be do, could be done. Live objects, uh, this is a, a, um, a way to, okay, in ORNB we have classes. I'd like to create methods, methods developed in JavaScript. So the new release of ORNDB will have uh, live objects. So your, your object will be persistent in your database and you can, uh, create, you can execute uh, methods against the object. And we'd like to try Google V8 uh, in place of Rhino to see if it's, it's faster. RDB is uh, always free, Apache license, so you can use it without pay. Uh, this is the company that, that uh, offers professional services uh, on top of RDB. And we are looking for partners and to give uh, a better support in all the countries and all the world. We have the, the academy. is uh, a, um, a moving uh, uh, academy to, to provide courses against RDB in uh, all the world. RDB in action, the new book is coming from Manning in the beginning of the next year. Okay, so uh, probably one hour is not, in, it's not so much to, to, to explain uh, this new kind of approach probably could be interesting, uh, but our vision is that the new generation of web application should be simple, more simple than, than today. And to be faster, we have to remove layers. Just providing a, a, a single point, a single nucleus of, uh, of, of product that can be used using the HTTP REST language, it's the internet language. In this case, uh, browser, multi-devices, uh, you can develop uh, your, your application on the mobile and just use HTTP, or just uh, use PhoneGap to interact against the RDB, or tablet as well. So database and business logic will be all integrated, all together. In this way. So, come back and get the development of web application easier than today with a, a unique place where to put business logic and, and uh, database using just one language, JavaScript, 
hey, this is the JavaScript everywhere conference. So <laughs> in the next conference, I we will we'll talk about Java. It's the same because ONB supports JavaScript, Java, uh, Ruby, and other languages uh, as server side functions. But this conference is uh, the target is JavaScript. So yeah, using JavaScript and uh, your documents are connected in a, in a big graph. So our goal was to reduce the complexity of application because uh, we, we saw that it, it is growing during the, the last years, improve performance, and use just one language for all. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, yeah. Good question. The question is uh, how to ach achieve scalability. Do you have sharding, clustering, something like that? Yes. ODB is a multi-master server, so you, um, it's not master-slave uh, classic approach, but uh, y you can replicate your server uh, n times, uh, and the server are replicated all together. You can decide if synchronous or asynchronous uh, replication, and uh, each server is a master. So there is no more anymore the bottleneck of the rights because only the master can write, usually in master-slave uh, configuration. Every single server can write. So, yeah, it's cool. If, if you need more performance, just uh, create uh, another ser copy and pass the directory of ODB in uh, another server and uh, just run. Two servers will, uh, will see each other and uh, will work in, in cluster. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you.